now on BBC World, another issue of global concern in Earth Report. In Syria, near the ancient Roman city of Palmyra, the barren hills have concealed a secret for decades. After months of working with local Bedouin, a biologist stumbles on a bird species believed to have been extinct here for 70 years. Syria. Sandwiched between Israel, Iraq and Jordan is an embattled Middle Eastern state. Security considerations dominate the country. Around 300 kilometers from the capital, Damascus, are the barren steppes. The Bedouin call this unforgiving land al badia which means steppe in Arabic. Temperatures range from below freezing in the winter to 45 degrees Celsius in summer. More than half of Syria is covered by this stony landscape. The Bedouin are pastoralists relying on the scanty vegetation. Their livestock roam the arid landscape, grazing on the scattered shrubs and seasonal grasses native to this environment. But in Syria, as in most Middle Eastern countries, an exploding human population has led to an increase in the sheep and goat population. In Syria as a whole, three million people in the 1950s has climbed to 18 million today. Overgrazing is rapidly turning al into a true desert. Uh, al badia in the past used to be a place which is full and rich with plants, animals, and many aspects of life, and people were very happily living in al -Badia. After so many years, a deterioration has happened to Palmyra and to al badia in particular. In an effort to stop it becoming a desert, the UN stepped in. With funding from the Italian cooperation program with Syria, FAO, the UN's food and agricultural organization, set up the Al-Talila project in 1996. The aim is to devise strategies to reverse the desertification of the steppe. About one million people depend on the steppe for their survival. So it's very important to be able to manage the rangeland in the steppe in such a way that people can use it on a sustainable basis. So we are attacking this on two pronged ways. In one way, we are trying to rehabilitate the rangeland, and on the other side is to give out this message of awareness on how to use the rangeland wisely. The Syrian government established Al-Talila as the first reserve to protect the region's biodiversity. Dr. Gianluca Sira is a 36-year-old specialist in wildlife conservation and management from Florence University. I started to work here in the Palmyra project three years ago. And uh, the aim of my uh, work was to uh, organize uh, and to make an inventory of biodiversity for the reserve. Uh, in other words, to find some naturalistic values of this area because uh, not much was done uh, in Syria, about, uh, especially about wildlife. Moreover, I also was interested in trying to raise the awareness of the locals. Why? It's not sustainable because too many people, they are using the same road. Mm. If everybody do like this, the woods uh, will disappear, and the, the, the wildlife yeah, will disappear, you understand? Yeah, yeah. I, so I think this is a nice uh, teaching uh, that Mr. Mira mm. found in the Quran. Mm. My team was composed of about seven people, uh, among uh, government people, uh, people from the community of hunters of Palmyra, and uh, people from, from the nomad community. It's been uh, a teamwork uh, and uh, in-service training. The training we've received is very important. 
We have learnt a lot about our environment and its plants and animals, both existing ones and those which have been lost. And because we come from nomad people, we can help the Bedouins to protect the steppe. Talila Reserve lies to the east of Palmyra. It covers 1,300 square kilometers and is divided into a nature reserve and specially managed rangeland. The land is entrusted to three Bedouin communities. Over 3,000 people and some 100,000 sheep must learn to live with and protect Al Badia's meager resources. The main issue of this project is the rehabilitation of rangeland. The rangeland is the main thing for the Bedouin, for the farmer, because on this rangeland he uh, let his camels, his uh, sheep graze, and those sheep really the main element is in, in his life. Alongside the conservation of the rangeland, there's also a component to reintroduce native animals such as the oryx and the desert gazelle to Al Badia. Before becoming locally extinct, under the pressure of hunting, these animals thrived in the area. The first group of eight oryx and 30 gazelles arrived in November 1996 from Saudi Arabia and Jordan. The oryx, again, it was introduced as eight oryxes, and now it's something like 30 oryxes. Those live in the wild. They are really their part of the nature, part of the environment. Uh, well, the output of this work has been, uh, has been an inventory of uh, wildlife. Uh, quite uh, precise inventory uh, from insects to mammals and uh, the most striking uh, output is the the bird checklist which is arrived up to 260 species even the hunters of Palmyra are surprised about these numbers to a scientist such as Dr. Sira the steppe is not so barren as it appears it's a haven for specially adapted wildlife but even Gianluca Sera was amazed at what he found. Until the 20th century, the bald ibis was widespread throughout the southern Mediterranean region. It was sacred to the pharaohs of ancient Egypt, known to Turkish Muslims, and even mentioned in the Old Testament. The Bedouin called the bird Abu Anuk, which means son of the scythe because of the shape of its beak. In Al Badia, it fed on lizards and other reptiles. No one knows how many ibis came here, but by 1930, the loss of habitat and hunting had become so intense that one authoritative publication declared it to be locally extinct. A scientific publication of June 1991 reaffirmed this conclusion, stating, all memory of the bald ibis has already been extinguished, giving no reason to expect any success from further research in Syria. But Adid, a local hunter, knew differently, and he confided a precious piece of information to Gianluca Serra. One day I told uh, Gianluca I saw a strange bird and I description uh, for him and he know what uh, this bird is. It is bald ibis, exactly this uh, bird. And he didn't believe me. He asked uh, me for two years and didn't believe me because he uh, thought uh, this bird extended. It actually took two years for me to believe uh, on this information because all the literature, published literature, was reporting that this bird was extinct. After uh, two years, I, uh, one day I told him, uh, actually, I uh, killed one from this bird. But after, because I feeling guilty if I uh, told him about that. So this hunter uh, really gave me uh, a very important clue. And of course, then, I, at the end, I believed him, especially when he told me that he killed one. I, I couldn't believe it. It was such an amazing thing and discovery. Sierra set off with a team of local Bedouin assistants. They had the daunting task of combing 20,000 square kilometers for signs of a small black bird.
to Egypt's Red Sea Riviera, where the sun always shines every day of every year. In an age of globalization, how long can the Gulf's great trading family carry on minding their own business? To find out, join me, Nima Abuwarde, on Middle East Business Report here on BBC World. Under the Antarctic Treaty, old bases no longer in use must either be restored and kept or cleaned up. The final day of judgment has come and the base has got to go. The abuse started almost immediately afterwards. I think it demonstrates the, at times, misguided or excessive passion of fans. And it reminds us how important, perhaps over-important, football is to some people. People are writing in code, basically, to each other. People are writing, you know, in, in sort of strange abbreviations. They're writing um, in the sort of, in what appears, actually, to be very, very childish writing. Gianluca Sierra realized it would be impossible to locate the birds without the help of the pastoralists. Nomad Bedouins were crucial to find the colony. And the, the, the knowledge of the local people is determinant, but very often it's hard to decode this information uh, because it takes for, for sure a long time to, to, to get deep inside the culture to understand uh, what the people means uh, while speaking. He said he saw this bird near cliffs. So now I will show him three different birds. Let's see if he recognizes the right one. Sira and his team spent several months moving from one camp to another, winning the Bedouins' trust and interviewing anyone who'd caught sight of the bird. <laughs> 